Back at it again with the LA Kings news. Now, last time we spoke about the Kings, it was literally yesterday. We made a video talking about Martin Kromiak as well as the New York Islanders prospect Atu Ratu. And honestly, I was really surprised with the turnout of that video. We had a whole bunch of people in the comment section talking about, Hey, Lego, we know you're a Closet Kings fan, man. Just come out and talk about it. And you know what? I kind of took that to heart a little bit. I kind of looked at it and I was like, you know, I'm always talking about how the Kings fan base is really good to me. Every time we make Kings videos, I love the Kings fan base that always replies in the comments because you guys are so kind. Canucks fans, Habs fans, I know your struggles. I live through your struggles. I breathe your struggles as well. But we can be a toxic bunch once in a while. So it's really nice to get that change of energy with Kings fans. And besides, I like your prospects. I like the young core of your team. You guys have some players of my favorite teams as well that just jumped over to your squad. So I decided, you know, let's go ahead and just start thinking about the Kings a little bit more, which is why I'd been reading a lot of Mayor's Manor recently, which if you're a Kings fan, you know exactly what Mayor's Manor is. It's John Hoven's website. He's a guy who is connected with the LA Kings and the media, the journalistic platform hockey side of things over there in LA, and he publishes things that he's hearing about the Kings on his own website. This in particular is not a video going about rumors, but instead we're talking about Rob Blake and what he has to say about a few of the recent signings the Kings made, as well as where they fit positionally into their lineup. Let's revisit Philippe Deneau as well as Alex Edler, former Montreal Canadiens, forward and Vancouver Canucks defenseman. Of course, the Canucks and the Habs being my number one and number two favorite teams makes this a very accessible topic for me, and because the Kings fan base is dying to see more Kings stuff, hey, I think it works out really well over here. So, this article, LAGM Rob Blake on the Kings signings of Edler and Deneau, as well as the plan moving forward, goes over Rob Blake and the comments he made regarding these players. It's a pretty straightforward piece that just goes over the quotes and whatnot, so what we're going to be doing is reading what Rob Blake has to say about the two newest members of the LA Kings. Starting off with Philippe Deneau, former Montreal Canadien. This is what led them to signing Deneau in free agency. Blake says it was positional, solidifying the middle. With Kopitar being here in the situation that he is at, and the minutes he plays all over the ice, to be able to partner that as a one-two punch down the middle with the younger sentiment we have coming through the next few years, we really feel we've solidified the middle of the ice here. And you know, my immediate instinct when reading that claim, I guess you could say that you solidified yourself in the long-term future with Dano, Kopitar, and the rest of the guys. And I get it, you know, you don't want to say that Quinton Byfield or Turcotte or whatever is your number two center right away. But when it comes to Gabe Velarde, I think this was a guy that was already in the position to maybe taking over that role. And we'll get into that idea a little bit more as this video goes on, but I was kind of thinking, you know, Kopitar number one, Velarde number two, and then you swap around Byfield Turcotte, whoever else you want to have in that rotation. You don't necessarily need to get another guy, but if you're there and you're saying, okay, we're not ready to have Velarde as our number two just yet. We're not ready to say that Byfield is going to take that next step yet. Let's have another veteran center who played first line minutes in the Canadiens playoff run when they went to the finals, was part of the reason they went to the finals, and then we'll have him as our number two. How's that sound? Now, 5x5x6 five by five by is pretty big, but still, the Kings, I mean, they have cap space, they've got an ability to spend that in which the Canadians might not have been all too willing to do, so whatever, you're going to go ahead and do what it is that you want. This is what Blake said on the chance of spreading out the heavy defensive minutes for Kopitar with Deneau. That was the whole idea, to get better this summer. We want to build through the middle, the defense, and continue to get better at different positions of need. We just thought that this, this Deneau signing, was the right step for the organization. And absolutely, you know, getting better, that is exactly what this team did with the addition of Philippe Deneau. He's a good hockey player, he can provide really good defensive shutdown roles, but at what cost? This is what Rob Blake said on the insurance Deneau provides at second center while younger players continue their development, and what this means short-term for Velarde and Byfield, with maybe even sending the latter to the AHL to start the season. I think you have an abundance of young players that really only had half a year in the American Hockey League last year. It takes time, and you don't want to put them in a position where they're not prepared. We want to see them when they're going to come into the lineup and help us win. This allows us to do that, as that type of position, with adding Arvidsson in the summer and now Deneau and Edler, we didn't dip into the prospect pool per se. We have that. 
We can filter and we can project over the next few years how many and where they're going to project in our lineup. He even spoke about the notion of moving Gabe Velarde to the right wing. We look at it especially when we've drafted so many centermen over the years, but any team I've been involved with, I've seen centermen go to the wings. I rarely see a winger go to center, so there's no reason any of these centers can't go to the wing and find the right position. That's kind of our philosophy here for the last few years. We're going to put the best players in the lineup and we'll filter them in the position that's most suitable for them. This is kind of going back to the point that I talked about in the previous video when Deneau was actually signed. I feel like Turcott, Byfield, and Velarde all command the middle of the ice so well that personally, just from an outsider's point of view, it's tough to see them translate to the wing. I really think they play their best when they're commanding the middle of the ice in all three zones, being responsible of transitions down the middle, using their sticks to take out wing-to-wing -wing passes and whatnot. I think these guys play really well on the wing, but you know what? If Rob Blake himself is saying that they're comfortable playing either one of these guys on the wing, then okay, that's their prerogative. I'm not going to tell Rob Blake of all people that he's wrong. He finally talks about Philippe Deneau and talks about the points. I'd say for Deneau, not being a big goal scorer, we'd expect points out of this guy. I think if you look at the even strength points generated by him and how he generates those points, that's kind of what we look at there. The combination, it's well talked about. Being able to shut down top lines or top centermen on other teams, and just the ability to roll with a Kopitar, then Deneau, then whoever we pencil in at 3C and 4C. The ability to match with other teams was important also. I'll just say this right here. If you want Philly Deneau to start producing in the playoffs, that's probably not what he's going to do, because you're going to give this guy defensive responsibility, and he's going to focus mostly on that. There's a reason he didn't really produce all too much in the postseason, but I definitely don't want to make it seem like he wasn't valuable in the postseason. It's just, he had four points in 22 games. We'll just leave it at that. That wraps up our talk on Philippe Deneau. Let's go over onto Alex Edler and what Blake has to say about literally the best defenseman the Vancouver Canucks have ever had. This is what Rob Blake says on the notion of adding Edler and whether or not that was a bridge deal to buy some time to find that eventual young, dynamic, number one left defenseman. Yes, with Mikey Anderson and Toby Bjorn fought along with Oli Mata last year, we had two really young defensemen come in and play big minutes, playing alongside of Drew Doughty, playing against tough competition and everything. In Alex Edler, we get a very solid, veteran, capable of playing minutes. He plays a heavier style and has played against top lines throughout his career. So he really stabilizes that left side in the amount of minutes and the quality of opponents he can play against. And yeah, you're kind of right there, Rob Blake. If there's anybody that's going to go out there and judge the talent of a defenseman, I think Rob Blake has probably got himself some merit in that conversation. And Alex Edler is absolutely that kind of guy that went from the young, hotshot rookie with a big frame and some pretty good wheels who could produce points to that grizzled vet that can just physically block guys off, be a force on the penalty kill, not really produce all too many points, but just be a solid overall all-round kind of guy. And that's kind of what he brings here with the Kings. He's going to be that bridge between the young Kings defensemen of the now as well as the next generation's worth of great Kings defensemen. Blake says this about Alex Adler. He's just a real solid D-man. First and foremost, he's a quality teammate. Anything we have heard since it's come out that we've agreed to terms with him has all been about the quality, the type of teammate, the type of professional you're going to get every day. He played big minutes in Vancouver against tough competition. He's always been very steady, very reliable, and he'll give us that, especially when you have a combination of Mikey Anderson and Tobias Bjornfot at a relatively young age, playing much above their age. You can surround them with good veterans like Oli, and now with Alex. It definitely helps. This is a text message that Hoven received from a player that was teammates with Edler from the Canucks. Great guy, the boys are going to love him. And yeah, that's the kind of guy that Alex Edler is. He's been primed by the Sedins of all people. Of course, he's going to be a good character guy to have in the locker room. And you know what? For Kings fans, I'm really excited, you know, seeing Deneau go out there in a new role, seeing Edler have a new home in L.A. and potentially mentor that next generation of L.A. defenders. Sounds really nice to me, you know. As a Vancouver guy, I'm going to watch this team with... Kind of just like tears streaming down my face because at the end of the day, these players chose to sign here and they provided some really good memories for me and the teams that I cheer for. Let's end this video off here with one more thing, though. This is what Rob Blake said about signing Philippe Deneau to six years and 35-year-old Alex Edler as well, and whether or not that's an indication that there's a mandate from ownership to win this year. No, that's our own mandate. We haven't made it the last few years and we want to get better. We want to push, and we want to have a legitimate chance of getting in there. And these were a couple of steps in the right direction to go 
that way. So talk to me in the comments what you think about the LA Kings, Rob Blake's comments on Philippe Deneau and Alex Edler, and how these two really mesh with the system the Kings are trying to build here with leadership, prospect development, and whatnot. Talk to me in the comments below what you think about all this stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. I just rolls in line nine. And bye. <laughs>